do you know what to say to yourself? Because oftentimes you're, you're talking to yourself and you don't even recognize it. But you have to know how to talk to yourself. Did you know that, um, like, say somebody has a problem eating chocolate bars. And, like, they're trying to stop eating chocolate bars. If you say, I decree, I'm not having no chocolate bars. Did you know that your appetite will change? Because you have just found out how to talk to yourself. You have to find out how to talk to yourself and speak the words of life that charge you in the direction of life. You're not always saying the right things to yourself. And then the other aspect is you could be a person that's not saying nothing at all. Did you know saying nothing at all is the same as speaking death? Because death is really disconnection from God's schedule. So your mouth's still not on the schedule of God for you. So when your mouth is not on the schedule of God, it's as if you're not saying the right thing at the same time. Are you catching this? Not speaking life and being silent about speaking life is the same as speaking death. So there's a mute button that demons love. They love when a, a, a believer operates in that mute button because you're not guiding your brain. Your brain is just is just open. That's why people make bad decisions, because they didn't finalize right decisions. Just think about it. it don't, that say, don't, don't, that, don't that happen all the time? People are making bad decisions because they never finalized the right decision. People are doing things that are demonic because they never established doing things divine. People become unfaithful because they never established faithfulness. So do you know how to talk to yourself? If you learn how to use your physical mouth correctly, you'll find yourself saying things that build strength, it builds determination, and it increases the strength that you have and the dedication that you have and the excellence that you have. Also, if you learn to say the right things to yourself, you will never drift off of the path that God has for you. You will never find yourself wasting time because, let me show you something. If you spend three minutes watching something God didn't want you to watch, you just wasted three minutes of blessing. And you just received three minutes of cursing. Do you know what the curse is? The curse is an operation, a system of decisions that God is not behind. A system of schedule that was not sculptured by the Father. So when, whenever somebody is undergir, uh, un, undergoing the curse, their steps are not being ordered by the Lord. It's being ordered by their curiosity, their flesh, their carnality, their jealousy, their envy, their gossip, their nosiness, whatever it is. So you could waste time through evil. Evil. The purpose of evil is Satan wants to steal your time, steal your mind. Because whatever takes your time takes your mind. If it could capture your mind, it could, it could deplete your time. It could collect your time. So in order for a person to get back that time, now they have to eradicate what they have saw, which people rarely do. They have to eradicate that time with that thing. So let me just show you something. People waste their time all the time, but they never eradicate what they wasted their time with. 
So it manifests over time again because they never verbally spoke to break ties with it. So let me show you something. So if I spend three minutes watching something, I'm not supposed to watch it. Okay, I've just wasted three minutes of my time. Okay, I can realize that I wasted three minutes of my time and then I can move on. But I never broke the impartation of the curse that I received by this satanically influenced robbery of my focus. There's always an exchange happening by what you see, what you hear. So look, look what happens nextly. Now, if I move on after I realize I wasted my time, I'm not really moving on. I may think that I'm moving on, but what has entered me through my eyes and my ears is already in me. So how many of you all know you could get shot and you could move on from the place where you got shot, but the bullet's still in you. So it don't matter if you're no longer at the site where the shooting happened. That shooting site is still inside of you because that bullet represents the activity of that shooting. So you might leave that site, but blood's still going to be coming out your body. You know why? Because the bullet already entered you. So why do people really go to the doctor? The doctor is attempting to remove the bullet. I want you to look at this now. Whenever you let something in you that God didn't schedule, the bullet is already in you, though you think you move on from it. So it's your job to use your mouth to remove the bullet. So you have to go back at the thing that stole your time and cancel off the impartation of it. So how do you do it? I cancel and I destroy, I remove every impartation that was transferred to me by what I was watching. And I receive the glory light of Jesus purifying my soul again to the right focus, to the right mindset. If you learn how to use your mouth, you will never have another day of weakness. If you learn how to use your mouth, you'll manage your mind. If you ever find somebody whose mind is sad, depressed, jealous, fearful, worried, that's a person they do not have wisdom. If you put a microphone on their chest throughout the day, I promise you, you will not hear no life being spoken out their mouth. If you ever put a microphone in the presence of somebody that has mental troubles, I promise you, you won't hear them preaching to themselves, prophesying to themselves, decreeing the words of God to themselves. I promise you'll never hear it because the mind it is depleted. And it loses energy in the presence of somebody that doesn't know how to use their mouth. Um, the tough times that I've had in life. The sanity that. Was retrievable. The sanity that was accessible. The soundness of mine was hidden in speaking the words of life to myself. So even when I was uh, homeless, when I was going through asthma, all those different type of things, I used the words of life to be untouched mentally. And it worked. The Lord did not silently hear Satan say, if that be the son of God, turn these stone into bread and remain silent. 
which is a big picture that you must take time to investigate. Why didn't the Lord just ignore Satan? It was an attack against Jesus' mind. So what was Jesus' response to his mind? Was it silence? I'll just ignore. I'm going to be all right. God got a plan for my life. It's going to happen for me. Whatever God has for me is going to be for me. Ain't nobody can take my blessing because it got my name on it. My name, Fat Albert. I see Fat Albert all over my gifts. If God got it for me, it's going to be for me. This is what Rancho Cucamonga keep on saying. You keep talking like that, Miss Rancho Cucamonga. What God got for me is going to be for me. Yeah, you keep on saying that. What God got for you ain't never, ain't never got to you yet. God got a blessing with my name on it. People been singing that song for years. I ain't getting the blessing. Up there be jamming the song. God got a blessing. God got a blessing. <laughs> Them gospel singers used to get away with mumble rap. They started the mumble raps. Me money, me money, money. What did he just say in here? They was up in the church up there, everybody shouting. Then you got them other gospel singers, they always crying in there. So, ooh, 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 ooh. Listen, so I'm already going through it. You taking me through something else. I don't know what you're going through, but you're bringing it through the syllables and stuff. Them syllables too strong. They they too sympathized. They too sympathized. Thighs. They going through my thighs and everything. Sympathize. I can feel it in my bones. Sadness and. With my name on it. So why did Jesus respond with words? It's showing you how you have to do. If you're going to manage, if you're going to manage your mind, you got to do it by speaking words. So there's people all the time given assignments from God placed in places, but they never speak in alignment with the place. So if God called you to be in Alabama, and to work on the railroads. Now you have a hidden cheat sheet to decree your success on the railroads of Alabama. You now have a cheat sheet to decree and declare your success on those railroads. You could speak forth the anointing of wisdom to perfect your job on the railroads good understanding for the railroads, faithfulness to Alabama, wisdom to bear fruit that's scheduled by the Spirit of God in Alabama, sanctification in Alabama. Lord, I'm praying for right decisions, no mistakes in Alabama while I'm working at the railroad. When's the last time did you pray that you won't make any mistakes? Or are you the type of person that make mistakes then have to pray? How does that make sense? Okay, so you're, you're praying for something that you could have prevented, but you didn't pray to prevent it. Now you're praying To prevent the consequence. Just think about that. The wise man do not pray to prevent consequences. They pray to prevent carnality. 
Because if you pray to prevent carnality, the consequence won't come. But if you pray to prevent carnal consequence, it's because you permitted the carnality. So what are you saying with your mouth throughout your day? What are you talking about? Because many people are talking to themselves all the time, but they're not saying the right things. So if you have a problem with a certain addiction, say you smoke weed. Let me show you something. And you go three days and then you start smoking weed again. Then you get anxiety and then you smoke weed again. Then you do all that. All right, let me just show you something. So how do I stop smoking weed? Let me show you. This, this is how you stop smoking weed. In the powerful name of Jesus, I will no longer smoke weed for the rest of my life. I will not smoke weed today, next week, next month, for the rest of my days on earth. And now I receive the grace of God that stops all weed smoking. As soon as you do that, it's done. As soon as you, you say that and you're focused, Weed smoking just was obliterated. It was completely ruined. It was dismantled. It no longer has its power. So I'm going to show you this. Let me show you something real powerful. Because you don't know that you're delivered. Time will present itself and you'll go back and try to smoke weed. Watch this here. Now you're free. But you'll still try to go and smoke weed again because in your muscle memory, in your evil nature, that's was your go to. Whenever you got to a certain state in your mind, whether you felt bored or whether you felt upset, anxious, offended, tired, weary, whatever the emotional Burden was. Now look at this. So you'll go smoke the weed, and when you go smoke the weed, your belly will feel nauseous. You'll even get to the point where you hate yourself. You'll hate your decision. I shouldn't have did this. Why? Because you already release words into the atmosphere that that has canceled weed smoking. And your words are fighting with the weed that's entering into you. That's how powerful words are. It's by words that God created the heavens and the earth by words. Do you understand how massive that is? So God spoke you into existence. You're alive today because God spoke you into existence. So when you get into the realm of speaking stuff into existence, you just formed a non-smoking woman. So when you still a smoking woman, the non-smoking woman like now nah, you done created me with your mouth. The non-smoking man has been created. So you smoking as a man, the non-smoking man like, no, you done birthed me into existence. You done formed me. So what what really takes people a long time to actually be free in their fruit? They have to train themselves to practice the words that they spoke because they only train themselves to practice the addiction. Let me show you something else. If you are dishonorable to Elisha and you call him, go up Baldy, go up Baldy. You just release that out of your fruit system. So whenever you're in an angry state, that's all you're going to echo inside of you. Go up Baldy, go up Baldy. Dishonor and disrespect going to come out you because that's what you opened up yourself to. Now, if you say I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus, I'm always going to honor Elisha, that's my prophet. 
That's my man of God. And when I see him, even though his head is bald, I will never laugh at him. I'll never make fun of him. I'll never gather in with people that's mocking him. As soon as you do that, you just kill dishonor. But see, the minute that you get into a state of the flesh, that's, that dishonor that you once operated in is going to come present itself again until you defeat it. So you are the one that have to learn to practice honor. And what is honor when it comes to dealing with Elisha? Praise, submission, patience, good understanding, helpfulness, servanthood, temperance, self-control. See, all these things are honor. This is how you honor the relationship with Elisha. So as you can see, the mind has to be renewed constantly and the mouth, the mouth is the major weapon of mind renewal. The mouth is the major weapon of mind renewal. Your mind cannot be renewed without your mouth. You have to use your mouth to renew your mind. If you're not using your mouth in a day, your mind is going lower and lower, is deteriorating. Do you know what deteriorating means? It's slowly dying off like a plant without water. Your mind could wither away without the mouth of life. Life is in the power of the tongue. We don't even want to deal with death because people are always speaking their own death. You ever seen somebody make a mistake and then they'll tell us, I'm so stupid. And you really want to tell them, amen, I agree, you is stupid. But then you, you be out of love, you're like, why would you say that you're so stupid? You, you want me to get a piece of bologna meat and just slap you in the, in the pearly winkles? What's, what's going on? What, what make you say that you so stupid, baby? Mr. Cynthia, what's making you say that you so stupid? What's going on in your man testicles? Your man testicles up here, my brothers and sisters. What's going on up in there in the membranicles that will make you say that you so stupid? Do you know what you just said? What's going on in the transglyceroid? Uh, the transglyceride that will make you pronounce over yourself, I'm so dumb, I'm so foolish. That's, that's, that's why even um, when I used to release my, 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 my comedic anointing on the line years ago, I had to rebuke some of you all. Don't say you stupid. Don't, 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 don't pit that on me. You, cause you might say it casually. You stupid. <laughs> you shut, shut up. Shut up. Don't, don't pit no cursing. Don't mess up a good moment. Cause women like to do that. If you funny, a woman, her reaction is, you stupid. <laughs> Your mama. That, that's, how, that's, that's, that's how women like to do. That's their reaction. Men don't really do that. Unless. The, the thriller. Unless. But women like that, that be their response. And then you notice it's always woman. 
Women are the major one that's talking about, I'm weak. I'm dead. What? What's wrong with you, Miss Elmo? How is your reaction to laughter and joy that you dead? Why you want to declare over yourself that you weak? I'm weak. I'm just showing you the foolishness of man. Man, why, why would you? Okay, something is making you laugh. Your laughter going up inside of you. Why are you going to counteract the moment with I'm dead? I'm weak. You stupid. You just cursed yourself in a moment that didn't require no curse. But these are things that the generation, they, they, they start to spread it like a virus. It's a virus in the speech. Everybody says it so it no longer seems harmful. Because why is everybody saying it if it's so harmful? When really the fact that everybody is saying it, it means that it's a satanic agenda. The same way people started saying on God, what the hell you doing as a child? You supposed to be God's friend. Why the hell will you be talking about on God? Somebody said, man, man I'm not eating them, them chili cheese fries no more. That's on God. On God? And you're supposed to be his friend. And you're blasphemously using his name in vain. It's the mouth. You look at people's mouth. Their mouth is always jeopardizing them and pitting them in trouble. The mouth. So how well off would you be if you purge your mouth? What is the supernatural toothpaste and the dental floss of everybody's spiritual mouth? Speaking the words of God over themselves. Hearing themselves decree and declare the word. You know, when somebody says this, I receive the abundance. I received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. You know what happens when somebody says that? I receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Number one, when you start receiving abundance of grace, that means that sin no longer has any power over your next decision. I receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Now you're operating from the mentality of your position that was given to you by the blood of Jesus, which is a pure position with a pure mindset, with a pure decision making. 